choose to uh, be more aware of the nature. But we're not going to do that today. Instead, we're going to talk about our church and its origins and how it got here and how we look like what we look like. Uh, bear with me. If you notice the pink sky, that relates to the age of the uh, projector. The, the, I look at the picture of my screen, it's blue. This projector is like me, it's old and tired, and, uh, but it still will get the job done, and that's what we're going to do today. And talking about our church, and by the way, be sure when I get through, eat up some of that stuff that is awfully good back there. It, it's an excellent, this is our best ever uh, snack display we have. So I like how you're calling it stuff. <laughs> Well, I've always been interested in how this church developed, and I've talked to people, old people have been here for a long time. My mother, who was a frustrated architect, was always interested in this church and how it came along and how it developed. Also, some of the information I will share with you was provided by uh, Thelma Sigler Williams' book, which she wrote about our church. Excellent book, there's a few copies still out in the hallway by the book sale area. But that book provided with a lot more of information as well as from other records. So I will uh, make an effort to share that information with what I've gleaned and we'll look at some pictures and we'll kind of carry it from origin to now. If you, why we're here at all in Millington, in 1873, the railroad came through Millington. The town of Millington was called Glencoe. It was based down on where the tracks crossed Big Creek. And what they found out is what we found out over the many years, Big Creek floods. And because of that, the uh, local landowner and farmer named Millington offered to provide land to move the town up away from the creek. And it basically moved up to where Easy Street crosses Wilkinsville on the cross of the railroad tracks, this town here, became the center of town. Uh, that was in about 18... Uh, 90, no, 1883. Uh, 1898 was when uh, our church, this church, was actually built. Not this church, but the church on this property. Before that, the Methodist and the Baptist worshiped together, but every other Sunday, the Baptists would preach, the Methodists would preach alternating, and they were in the white church across the street from us. And by 1889, four of our founding church fathers were sitting on a poplar tree log, and they decided a Methodist church must be built. And that's the origin of that starting. And they did build a church. It was called the Millington Methodist Episcopal Church South, and was built of white clapboard wood. It had one room. They had 225 seats. I had 10 Sunday school classes. They heated, they lit, lit with kerosene lamps and coal burning stoves. They had uh, a pump organ, a piano, and uh, hand fans for cooling. And that was, that's how we started out. Uh, and that's where our church fellowship, that's where we met in that building. Uh, and that building remained there until we built the new parsonage. Uh, in 1920, hmm. in 1920-21, the wood frame building was torn down and they built the brick building that's right over here. That brick building was built to, as the start of the church with a plan to add a uh, sanctuary onto the side. That building is really unusual if you look at it. It's really an octagon, a rectangular octagon. It's got eight sides, but four of the sides are short. And you can see, I've got a pointer. You can see here, the corner in the, in the back, that's the back. That corner is also present in, right down the hall here. Of course, you know, this is where the church office is, and you see the side there. So it had four short sides and long sides, four long sides make an unusual rectangle. I have searched to try to find a picture of this building prior to adding on the, the, the sanctuary. 
I went, I couldn't locate it. I looked everywhere, I talked to people. I went to the Memphis room at the uh, Memph Memphis Shelby County Library downtown in Poplar. Went to the room, had them pull out the box for Millington, and what I found in there was Thelma Sutton Williams' book. <laughs> <laughs> So that was that, that. So I couldn't go any further. But so someone may have a picture of this building as it originally finished. But it's a brick building, two stories, Sunday school up to the top, and that's the other corner that nearest us where the book sales are. If you see, it just shows. And I, I've not really seen another building exactly shaped like this in this area. It was unique. This is the church office as we all know it. But what's to, what is interesting about the church office is that is where the sanctuary, where the altar was, and the pulpit. The sanctuary went lengthwise down the, through the pastor's office where the bathroom is down to the, the nursery. That's where people sit to face the uh, pulpit and the altar. I think maybe I may be the last person that was baptized there in 1948. Uh, because that's when the sanctuary was added on. Why did they add the, they built the 1920 with a plan to add the sanctuary? Why did they not go ahead and start that project? What happened between 1920s and 1948? The Great Depression and World War II. And that really put building plans on hold. Uh, on hold, but not forgotten. If you look, just to see a little bit of the original building, which I thought was interesting, this is the entryway down here, which used to be the outside entrance. You see the uh, stonework at the top with the keystone? That was actually the entrance into the church. You turn right into the uh, sanctuary and at the pulpit. This is at the other end. This is where, uh, back by the nursery, and that doorway you see is the, where the original door was. The outer part was added in the 70s where they enclosed that area outside by the uh, Sunday school office and the nursery. But the original door, you'd go in there into the sanctuary. This is another view of this. Uh, this, by the way, that, I have to comment on that stained glass window right there. That stained glass window has memories for a lot of us in this church because that was dedicated to Alicia Hornsby who died tragically at age 16 in an automobile accident. And this window is put in in her honor. And if you look closely, you'll see uh, that that is Alicia Hornsby looking over at Jesus' shoulder. And sitting here with Jesus' hand on her head is Robin Hornsby, her younger sister. And so for those in the church that remember this, and, and it's Carla Hornsby, I don't see her here today, but uh, instead of letting that loss destroy her, she turns around and she spends a lot of time working with young women. So we need to be proud of her. She has used that, used that terrible experience to do good as Christ would want it. This is a view of what the property looks like. And I'm putting that up there just so we can talk about uh, how it's changed. There has been some changes. Uh, for one thing, this originally the flame center was going to put at an angle. Instead, it was turned going in a straight east-west line. Also, the property enlarged. It's 1966 and 67. The property south and west of the church was uh, this way and that way was purchased to add to the campus. And in 1979, a gift from the A.S. Mitchell estate extended the, the church all the way over, I mean, the, our property, all the way over to the Bend and Church Street. By the way, when cleaned that ditch out uh, about a, two years ago, saw an amazing thing with that end of the property by the drainage ditch a beaver had cut down a tree. So somehow a beaver worked its way all the way up into our property, <laughs> cut down about a 10 inch tree and left. Uh, <laughs> just go figure. Uh, 
Let's talk about some features inside the church that I, thought, that I found interesting, you may or may not. This is the uh, pulpit. It may not be the original pulpit, but it was a pulpit that we used up until uh, Dr. Uh, William Bill Osteen built a replacement of it, the one we use now. But this was our pulpit. Interesting history behind this. This pulpit was um, made by the Millington Screen Door and Sash Company. If you realize in the early 1900s, before air conditioning, every town had someone that made screen doors and sashes because you had to have your windows open or you cooked. And so that was important. And you can see in the ornate decoration, it looks like early 1900s uh, style. And this, that, this is, whether we purchased it or it was a gift, I do not know. But that, that is characteristic. It's now in the chapel if you want to see it. Also in the chapel beside, I just noticed when I was there, there's a baptismal font. And that, that was moved from the church and replaced in the early, at the same time we redid the front of the church. And I will tell you, I don't know who this is, Dr. or Mrs. Charlie Polk. Someone may know that, but I couldn't find in my readings, but, but this plaque is on that baptismal font. And so I'm honoring that gift at this point right now for everyone to know that this doctor and his wife donated that. If we look at the church, how it looked after they added on the uh, sanctuary. This is what it looked like before it was added on again. This is the addition onto the church. Uh, so it was fairly plain, and that's the church that some of us remember, if we think back. Uh, but it didn't stay that way. And at the same time, that was built in 1948 and 49, the extension was. At the same time, almost immediately, Fellowship Hall was built. Fellowship Hall is where the food pantry is. And in growing up in this church, everything that we do here took place in there. Boy Scouts, uh, uh, back then, the, uh, you don't realize this, back then, Methodists liked to do potlucks. And we ate a lot of potlucks in there. We do that here too. But uh, that building has been there just about since 1948 or 49. The this is the Sunday school edition. This was added in 1953, and this is the edition that we know of, uh, just that way from the church south. And that was added to have Sunday school classrooms available for uh, use. And then, and by the way, the sky is blue. It's not, that wasn't a strange effect. The sanctuary uh, was extended in 1959, and it moved out. And that added a great deal of, of length. It made it a long track. Uh, ch uh, church, I will tell you what's interesting is, some of you might come and think, why is this, church so long. And that's the reason, because we, to add seats, we extended it out, the church did. I will tell you one thing it does, it makes probably one of the best wedding churches going, because there's a lot of aisle seats for the bride to walk down and be seen. And I think that's been a real plus. Everyone says, that's a great wedding ch church. Uh, interesting, if you want to see where we extended it from, if you look closely in the back of the church, you'll see a line on both sides of the wall. And that line shows where the church was added on, so you know exactly where the back was and where it went out. Uh, I'm sure some of you may or may not have noticed that line, but I always thought, well, that's interesting. We're also impressed with how well our church family in 1959 really did it, how well they blended it. Because if you look, you really don't see the architecture of the windows. They are all they all seem to go continuously in a perfect order. The only way you know it was added is that line. Uh, as far as the windows, all the windows are named in memory of someone. And if you look down, when you walk down there, look down and think about those memories. And some of the names, I didn't get them all down. Dan Bland, by the way, Dan Bland also is on the... Uh, World War II uh, board, and he uh, was, uh, he looked like from the star beside his name, he didn't survive. 
So also there's Mark Goodwin, Mrs. Johnny Timms, William Hornsby, J. Marvin Hampton, Maggie Ward, uh, just these are a few of them, I'm not gonna name them all. But there's also Eva Fowler Donovan, and Eva Fowler Donovan is Ray Donovan's mother. So she was on, the, on that wall. So those plaques for Lower East Windsor have significance to some people. And of course, the uh, chapel in 1975, it was remodeled. Before that, some of you remember they were uh, organ pipes along the back wall where the stained glass window is. And then with the remodel, that <coughs> this window went in. And this window, oh, well, maybe I'll get back to that one, to the stained glass window, because I have something to say about that. But if you look at the addition of Williams Hall, I mean, uh, of, yes, Williams Hall, the plant where we have right here, this is a gift of Thelma Sender Williams and Jim, uh, her husband, Jimmy Williams. This was donated uh, in honor of them and built by them. Uh, and you can see, as we all know how this works, here is the old church, here is the sanctuary addition, and then here is the opening of the flame center that goes to the back. So that's for some of us old timers, that's a new addition. Uh, sad to say, but that's true, it's new. Uh, that's, where we are, that's where we are right now. We're sitting right here in this room, which is Williams Hall. And I'll tell you a little bit about Williams Hall. And this is Thelma Sigler Williams. And I'll give you a little history. I said there were four founding fathers sitting on that property log. One of them was Mr. W.A. Sigler, Sr., also called Buck. And we called him Buck. He was old Buck, and there was new Buck. Uh, but they weren't father son. They were just related. They were related, but they weren't. But old Buck was W.A. Sigler. The young buck was the buck that we all know and, and loved, uh, uh, who was part of our church for a long time. W.A. Sigler was apparently owned a whole lot of land. The Mississippi River is called Sigler Island. And so apparently, at some time in the past, he owned that island as well as the, the farmland next to that island. Uh, but, uh, so, buck, the old buck Sigler was responsible for providing the resources that Thelma Sigler Williams could use to support this church. Uh, I, this is, the, if you stand in the church and turn around from the altar and look back, you'll see two stained glass. Uh, Pastor Amanda sees them every Sunday, as well as the choir. And the one on the left is uh, for Miss Jessie Sigler. That was W.A.'s wife. And she, her, she was born in 1884 and died in 1975. And that, that's on the left. If you look on the right, that's facing the back of the church on the right. That is for Mr. W.A. Buck Sigler. He is 1876 to, 18, um, to 1971. Uh, interesting man. Uh, old Mr. Buck Sigler would come to, when I worked in the drugstore in high school, he would come to the shopping center and he would drive in, and he wouldn't pull in to the front of the store. He just pulled and stopped, blocking anywhere from three to four cars. He couldn't get out. <laughs> and he'd get out of the car, walk into the store, and he got quick service. We, we moved him to the front of the line because we knew there were going to be some angry people that couldn't back out. built and the old parsonage I saw earlier was was the uh, preacher's wife in this church and she she's told me that she was involved in selecting uh, materials that went in that church at that time that was the year after I graduated from high school so he, he was minister till 67 wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Reverend Comenis is who I'm talking about. That's now the Resurrection House. This little building here has a little history to it that's worth sharing. In 1990, the youth with the MYF 
And Carol and I were the youth leaders there. That's why my hair is this color. <laughs> it was dark brown until I did that. It was changed overnight. Uh, the youth were involved in going to Mountaintop, a program where you go to Middle Tennessee in the Cumberland Mountains and help poor and old people repair their houses, decks, stairs, things like that. And because of that, you had to have tools. So we had collected a large amount of tools and had to have a place to store them. So the youth, with the help of the adults, built this building for that specific reason. Now we use it for part of the groundkeeping, uh, landscaping, and to store the aluminum cans that you bring uh, to the church. And then we have to get down to the flame center. Uh, the flame center was about, when did that build? About 90, someone tell me, 97, 1997. I remember that because I think my daughter was the first person to have a reception there after she got married in this church. Uh, that, the Flame Center came in my, I, I have to give credit to my mother. My mother was in charge of this Williams Hall building. Uh, she loved architecture. She was involved, the, the chairperson for the, this edition. And she was also involved with that just because she enjoyed being involved in building things. Uh, but the Flame Center came along I will say one thing you can say about our congregation and the church leaders. At that time, uh, we've always been fairly conservative. Uh, Leonard Dunham was a conservative financially, not, not other ways, but financially conservative. Uh, but they decided we'll build this building only with the proviso that it will be open to the public and can be used by the community. He did not, and the leaders did not want this to become a Methodist, uh, center for just us wanted it used. And I think we have met those guidelines over the years. The number of different organizations and people have used our space is part of what this church decided that's why we're going to put that building on this ground. When they extended the church out, there was a beautiful oak tree. And somewhere I've got a picture of it, but I don't have it. A small picture I didn't put in here. The oak tree was a huge white oak tree, and it was an all right place if you didn't extend the church. But when you extended the church out, it came right up beside the tree. That tree was hit by lightning, and it had a rotten core, and it had to come down. So it was removed. Uh, the creation care team, using money generated by aluminum cans that we recycled, bought a nut all oak and had it placed in, uh, in the ground there. Uh, thanks to, uh, sitting right there, Dick Barnhart and his amazing tractor backhoe. <laughs> I mean, he, he, with him, we put in a tree, it was about four or five inches uh, across. The committee and friends worked to get it in the ground, and you see it's done really well. And I think it's filling in for that loss of that other oak tree. Then, even more recently, we've had the uh, easy, we call, I guess it's called the Easy Street House. And the Easy Street House came along, uh, gosh, when Ed White was pastor. And Ed White and members of Rodney Boswell and members of the church, some of you, uh, Dick was involved. There are people involved in the renovation of that. And if you ever want to see how dramatic it is, uh, Pastor Matt has got some pictures that we found of the, um, how bad it was and how good it became. So it's really an amazing improvement of property. And they worked hard to make that a place to live in again. Let's go back to the chapel. I, I, I don't want to go too long because I know the guy speaking next will get mad. And, <laughs> uh, but the, uh, if you look at the chapel, there's, let's talk about that, that window in the back, or that stained glass window behind us. We've all sat and stared at that so long. In fact, when I was taking a picture for this, our daughter asked me to send her a picture of that window because it meant to her that was kind of the church because she grew up looking at that stained glass window during her church time. And so it has a history. By the way, has anyone ever noticed? Let me back, let me back up here if I can. Have you noticed what's over the heads of the sleeping uh, disciple? Mm -hmm. That's Jerusalem in the background. 
This is looking across the Kidron Valley from the uh, Mount Follows and from Gethsemane. So you can see the, the uh, Jerusalem in the back. I thought that was, it took me many years to notice that, I'll tell you. But if you look at the church itself, well, I'm going backwards now. This window was provided by a gift from uh, uh, the Siglers, W.A. Sigler and, and family, a memorial to William Sigler and Jesse Sigler. Uh, this window was uh, funding. There's a plaque under it if you ever got their look that shows where it came from. Uh, so they were, uh, I'm giving the honor because they were an uh, important part of the early church and making us what we were. The, and, I, and I didn't have a picture, but I should have because if you look at the doors as you go out in the church, there are two stained glass windows in the doors. They were put in in 19, I mean 2005 or six in honor of Jack Fondry, who was a longtime member of the church, an important part. He's responsible for the sign that you see at the corner of uh, Church Street in Wilkinsville with the metal cross and the brickwork. So, but look at those doors. All of them had significance and importance. And this church has got a rich history. And I think we ought to, we should honor that history. And I think now, hopefully I share with you just about everything I know. Some of you may know more or different. If you do know different than what I've said, don't say it now. So <laughs> uh, uh, just avoid that, but you can tell me later. Uh, Carol? I just wondered if anyone had any questions or additions to that. Yeah, okay, she just overrode me. Go ahead, any questions or additions? <laughs> I know that the sanctuary, I mean, our, uh, the house yeah. was built by a gentleman named Howell Hill. His brother was Quay Hill, and the Hills were in construction. How, how Hill built that house over there. They built my mom's house, too. By the way, that house was given to the church by the Futrell family. I should have mentioned that and honored everything. That's what I was going to mention. Yeah, the, the Futrells who were in this community at that time. Yeah, how and Quay Hill were built. If you ever go out into their streets named after their kids uh, out in, in Millington View. Anything else? You lost part of your presentation on the floor uh, behind you. Well, foot. you know, that's why I was having to ad lib the last page. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I thought I had five pages. There's only four here. Uh, but anyway, I I think it's time we have time to have coffee and juice and uh, snacks before we go to the church. I will tell you, I will try to practice when I give the talk the next year. I was learned at university. I was told you need to practice the three B's of public speaking. The three B's are be bright, be brief, and be gone. <laughs> so, so I'll give you a hint. We make it out early this Sunday. Well, thank you very much.